Hey everyone, welcome back to the channel and in today's video I'm going to be talking about something called due diligence or in another words is doing the best that you can for your client. So what exactly do I mean by this? Well, due diligence is making sure that you do what's right as an engineer. You may not be paid to look at all these things, but if you're going to be doing a good job or if you want to get some repeat work, you want to make an impression, it's always good that you are able to look at a project holistically and just flag up problems. There might be an instance where you've just been asked to look at this one particular thing and ignored everything else. But if you're a good engineer, you can look at what you've been asked to do, but you can also have a look at the surrounding things because you've noticed a problem and you can flag this up and you could say to the client like, oh, I've done what you've asked me to do, but I've also found these few problems. Would you like me to you know, help you resolve them, help you find out more. What would you like me to do? If the client says, no, that's okay, I've got someone else to do it, I already knew about these problems, fine, you know, that's absolutely fine. All you do is just flagging up these issues, you're doing your due diligence. You know, alternatively, they might have asked you to look at a specific thing and you've gone and found these all these other problems and you go around and tell the client that you've looked at all these other things and the client goes, oh my God, you know, I haven't thought about this, what do I do? And then you can just go like, well, if we just up the fee, for what you've originally agreed me to do, then I can have a look at all these things. And this is just gonna be showing them to the client just how much value that you as a person or you as a firm or company can add to them because you're not just, you know, you're not just a yes man, you're not just you know answering their specific questions, you're doing above and beyond what they've asked you to do. And for me, that's a sign of a good person, a great engineer. So a really small example of this is I was given a very, very small little house extension job just to have a look at. And in the email, it was just, can you just have a look at this um, small extension? We're knocking out a couple of um, holes in the existing wall for the extension, and we're gonna need a couple of steel beams. Sounds easy enough, yeah? Well, I could have just approached it and just purely looked at the steel beams, which I need to design, looks fairly straightforward. I know where the load's going, you know, nothing nothing major. I could have given a, a really cheap quote. But because I do my due diligence, you know, I wanna show that I've looked at the project as a whole, I'm not just purely taking everything that they're saying as face value. I'm going above and beyond and, you know, just looking around the project to see if there's any other problems which they may have missed. And on this um, single story extension, they've got a really nice bifold door really big opening and it, there's no on a drawing which says um, canic lintel because the single store extension is going to be made out of um, cavity masonry so i was looking at the drawings and i was thinking yeah this opening is pretty pretty big i've seen that there's a, a pier in the middle and i was like okay maybe, maybe they can use this as an intermediate support i definitely don't think that the lintel canic lintel could span the full width i'll probably have to do a quick load check but I wasn't really sure. And at it initially, because I was just giving initial comments at this time, I was like, I'm not sure if this pier can take it because this intermediate pier is only showing a single leaf of block because of the sort of facade that they're putting in. They couldn't have a cavity wall in the middle to support the canic lintel. Because canic lintel is supported on both, both skins of block work and not just the inner skin. So, by just looking at the drawings, the plan drawings and the elevation drawings, I flagged up this problem. And I did a really, really quick markup. I mean, it was really obvious for me to see. Quick markup, quick couple of notes. Fired off an email and asked these questions. And lo and behold, the architect had overseen this and he was like, oh, I hadn't noticed this. Um, because I asked him, like, do you want to retain this facade which you've put on? Or can you actually put in an intermediate cavity wall pier in the middle so I can support this canic lintel? And the architect was like, no, I've, you know, this is an oversight, I haven't thought about it. You know, you're right, but I want to keep this facade. Can you design a beam or, you know, can you check that the cat lintel? Can you get me something which works so that it can span the full span? So I was like, yep, yeah, that's fine. I'll design the beams to form the openings in the existing wall. And I'll also do you a design for this, you know, lintel to span for this bifold door because this does need to be designed. The last thing you want is for your beam, even though it's not supporting a lot of load, it's supporting a tiny little bit of masonry above the 
above the opening and it's supporting the roof. It's not a lot of load but over a big span that could deflect quite a lot and the last thing which you want is to have your structural beam or lintel deflect too much over a bifold door because that could end up crushing the bifold doors and that's obviously not what you want. So by just doing my due diligence I ended up having to do an extra design which is fine because I got paid extra for it. You know, I flagged it up, did my due diligence, got paid for it, happy days. The client's happy, architect's happy, what, what more can you ask for, you know? I initially went above and beyond, flagged the problem, everyone got paid, it got built, everyone's happy. So just from this little example, you could extrapolate this onto smaller, medium, way larger projects. As you develop in your career, you're going to be talking to more and more contractors, clients, architects, other engineers and it's really important that you try and distinguish yourself from the others you want to try and stand out what at the end of the day as a consultant design structure engineer you want to be providing as much value as you can and just because and I'm not saying that you provide value and not get paid for it you can basically do a little bit of freebie advice and then get paid more for it because you're going above and beyond initially but then you get paid more afterwards. So hopefully you found this short little video interesting or helpful. If you've got any questions, please drop me a comment below and I'll catch you on the next video. Cheers.